So I thought I'd show everyone my uh, newest junk purchase here. Yep, it's a motor. And it's a small block Chevy. But it's the weirdest small block Chevy ever because it's the first one. This is the stock 265 that came out of a 1955 Chevy. First year of production of the small block Chevy. Now that's a weird thing to say, but that's when it came out. So, you know, they ran that thing 1955 through roughly 2002 was the end of production. They still sell it aftermarket, but that was when it stopped being produced in, you know, like vehicles from GM. That was still the Chevy Vans, I think was the only thing that came in at that point. But uh, there is some weird things with this motor. Because most people know small block Chevys are pretty universal as far as motors go. A lot of things are swappable. You know, the big year span and everything. But this has some weird stuff. So let's start here. This is the generator. And you'll see it goes right through to the power steering pump. A few cars did this back then, but this is like crazy for today's standards. So, yeah, it's driven right off the back of it. That's it. You have one accessory. And that's one of the other things to mention is that the early small blocks have no accessory holes anywhere from the cylinder heads so you have nowhere to bolt brackets so that bracket there coming off the generator is about it and the generator bolts to the bottom of the or it, by the way, it bolts to the exhaust manifold so there's really nowhere to mount the accessories the later heads like by the late 60s early 70s actually had bolts in the front of them so you could mount the brackets it was a lot easier now the way this power steering worked it doesn't work like a normal car where it goes into a gearbox or anything uh, I have the whole setup from that too, the guy gave me. This is the whole tie rod setup off the car. Either arm, pitman arm, etc. tie rods. It has a hydraulic ram that actually goes in the center link. And then to the frame, there's the power steering hoses. So yeah, that's what the setup was. I know some of the Mustangs were like this too in a few other cars. That's what your early power steering was like. Before they kind of standardized it and put it right into the steering box itself. And then eventually the rack and pinions. So back to this weirdness. Next thing of note, the first few years of production on small block Chevys, these uh, bolts for the valve covers are not square. If you look at the top of them, these two are closer together than these two are. So your bolts are on like an angle, like that. That was done through the, like, so the first few years. I'm not sure the exact, but I know that the 265s and some of the 283s were like that, where from that point on, all the bolts were going you know, to square it off. Like you could take a valve cover and flip it upside down. It would still fit up until 87 ish. It's kind of a blurred line. I've seen some earlier cars that have them, but they went to the center bolt valve covers where there's just bolts in the middle of the valve cover to hold it down. Next really weird thing. It's going to blow everyone's mind. There's no oil filter. Normally be right there. It doesn't have one period. So again, a lot of the earlier motors were like that. Um, most of these I've seen actually have an add-on filter. My 49 Chevy had that. We're somewhere in the block. I don't know where it is on this. I haven't looked yet. There'll be two uh, oil ports. And you can run hydraulic lines. And it'll be a canister filter, which will like mount here or around here somewhere. And it's basically, it's, it's a bypass filter. You don't get your full oil flow through it. You just get some of it through it. And some of it gets filtered. So yeah, that's that. Uh... As with all early small blocks, it's a short water pump. Did they uh, change that again, like the late 70s? Or sorry, early 70s, rather. Late 60s, early 70s. Next thing is missing. She toys pieces of wood, but behind that, there's no motor mount holes. Once again, at all. That's where a small block normally mounts. These motor mounts are right here in the front. That's all that you can mount the motor with. There's not even a casting in the block anywhere here to screw a bolt into. So yeah, they changed that by, I think, the early 60s, maybe late 50s, I'm not sure the exact year. But yeah, these, the, oddly enough, the front mount bolts, the holes in the block, uh, they kept on the later motors. They still have them. Uh, next thing with early motors, there's no crank bolt. That pulley just gets, or the harmonic balancer, the pulley actually bolts on. There's bolts in there for that. But the crank pulley is just hammered onto the crank. It's just press fit. Nothing holds it on other than just force. Newer ones have a 5 8 bolt in them. Pretty standard issue on this side. Except for everything missing. Standard fuel pump. I mean, it's an old fuel pump, but same idea as everything else ran later on. 
oil bath air cleaner. This went for all older cars. But uh, there's not actually an element in there. You actually lay a trough of, uh, I guess you could use clean, but it was normally d dirty motor oil from the motor. And this thing would go through a series of chambers where it would purposely draw the air, like, across the oil. And then your dirt would stick in the oil. And in theory, the clean air goes in the motor. Point distributor. Wires are all intact. Yeah, the guy pulled this out of a running car. I just pulled the distributor cap off when I was unloading it so it wouldn't get smashed. But, uh... This is in a running driving car. I have the transmission in a bag there. The bell housing and clutch are in that bag. It was a manual trans car. But uh, this car had 80,000 miles on it, and the guy turned it into a gasser. Put the motor up for sale. I thought it was kind of neat because uh, these really early motors you don't really see anymore. People a lot of times will make a newer motor to look like an older motor, you know, by doing the valve covers and stuff like that. And you can kind of trick people like that, but this is really the old one. Oh, forgot about though, one of the other weird things it has. You notice these valve covers are solid. There's no breathers, no oil fill, nothing. Later on, there'd be a PCV in one, a breather in the other, and then oil fill. Well, like most early small blocks, this is the breather, and you fill the oil through here too. You dump it in there. That goes in the lifter valley. And normally on these early ones, there's a PCV back here, like right around here-ish it goes. This one kicks up a notch again, and here's your breather, or your PCV rather, is a road draft tube. So this thing just goes to the ground, and as you drive, that tube's on an angle, and as the air gets drawn across it, it creates a negative pressure and sucks the crankcase gases out, you know, along with oil and other such things right on the ground. But a lot of old motors had that, but this is the only small block Chevy that has that to my knowledge. I don't think 283's ever had that. But yeah, there you go. There's some weirdness for you. Everyone thinks all small block Chevys are the same, and this one, uh, this one definitely takes to a weird level.